He is giving me kisses as always. All right, I guess I'm just gonna record the intro with Pina giving me kisses because she, well, oh, well now she stopped. She wasn't stopping at all before. So today's video. Hey everyone, welcome. Pina's like the worst for intros because she hates staying still. Let's try it one more time. I'm just gonna film this little intro without them because three of them are sleeping and Pina is horrible with staying still. So today's video is just gonna be a little bit different than usual. It is a collaboration with Piggy Time. We made a video on ferrets versus guinea pigs and just general information about them. So it could help you guys if anyone is just interested in having guinea pigs or ferrets as a pet or if you can't decide which route you wanna go, you know, rodent, ferret, mustelidae, anything like that. I know since ferrets are commonly compared to rodents pretty often, uh, this should be a good insight onto how different they actually are in pretty much every single way. Also, be sure to check out the channel Piggy Time. I will leave their link in my description. Also, one more thing. I can't believe we're almost at a thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so, 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 so very much. I'm so excited. Um, I was thinking of doing like a little giveaway when I reach a thousand subscribers. So keep subscribing, please. And then I will give you guys a little giveaway. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this little informational video. 80% of a guinea pig's diet is fresh hay. Guinea pigs are herbivores, meaning they eat plants. Each guinea pig should have one cup of vegetables every day. Most guinea pig owners choose to feed pellets in addition. Ferrets are obligate carnivores, so that means that their diet must consist of only meat or meat-based products. If being fed kibble, it needs to be high protein and high fat with ideally no carbs at all. Many owners choose to feed raw completely or to feed with a good quality kibble and raw as a snack. A good treat for ferrets would also be this soup, which consists of warm water, chicken, quail, raw eggs, and salmon oil. Some other ideas for snacks for ferrets would just be to get them freeze-dried or dehydrated meats. And this one is a great product because it is just chicken breast and it has solely one ingredient, which is chicken. Most cages sold in pet stores are way too small and therefore unsuitable. A good guinea pig cage has at least eight square feet of unbroken floor space, the same number of hides as guinea pigs, fleece, paper-based, or safe wood-based bedding. It might have a small level, but it shouldn't have too many because guinea pigs are generally afraid of heights. Lastly, you'll need hay and water at all times. Guinea pig playtime is important, but not nearly as much so as it is for ferrets. I recommend about half an hour each day of out of cage time. Your piggies can have outside time, floor time in a playpen or bathtub, or free roam. Harnesses and exercise balls are unsuitable for guinea pigs. The minimum sized cage requirement for ferrets is 42 inches tall by 26 inches wide and 26 inches long. You want to make sure that the cage has multiple levels and hammocks as well as a place for their litter box. Ferrets also need a minimum of four hours a day outside of the cage, but four hours is really just a minimum. It is actually recommended that they get eight hours outside of the cage, but free roam is always the best. They also need lots of toys and space to roam around and play. Guinea pig baths are a heavily debated topic, but we believe that you should bathe your guinea pigs two to four times a year to keep them safe and healthy. You also need to regularly cut their nails. Male guinea pigs need their private parts cleaned every few months, and long-haired guinea pigs need their fur brushed every week. Ferrets actually do not need to be bathed very often at all. They only really need to get a bath at most once or twice a year or when it is just extremely necessary and they are very dirty. Many people will try to bathe their ferrets to get rid of the ferret smell, but actually overbathing will make them produce more oils and they will actually smell a whole lot worse. If you do need to bathe your ferret, however, the best way is to just put some oats in a sock and soak them in the oat water rather than using any shampoos. However, ferrets do need to have their nails trimmed every few weeks, and the easiest way to do this is to just put a little bit of salmon oil on their bellies and have them lick it off, and while they're licking it off, you just trim their nails. A guinea pig's average lifespan is around six or eight years. Because guinea pigs are prey animals, they like to hide their illnesses. While this is very helpful in the wild, in captivity, it can make it very difficult for you to know when your guinea pig is sick. So while they don't need regular vet visits, if you sense anything is wrong, you should take your guinea pig to the vet as soon as you can. 
A ferret's average lifespan could range anywhere from 5 to 10 years. Unfortunately, ferrets are prone to some illnesses such as insulinoma, adrenal disease, and lymphoma. These are most commonly seen in Marshall's bred ferrets. Guinea pigs are very social animals and absolutely cannot live alone. If your guinea pigs fight, you can put them in a split cage or put two cages right next to each other. Ferrets are very social animals and they love to cuddle up with each other and sleep near each other and play with each other all the time. They form emotional bonds very easily, so it is very important to have a minimum of two ferrets, but it is most commonly recommended to have three because when one of the ferrets passes away, the other one will at least have another ferret to lean on. Ferrets also require a lot of exercise and stimulation, whether that be toys or with other ferrets or people, just social interaction, so having more than one is, makes that so much easier. 